fact, I have a board right there showing the fingers. So you're right. Um, so numbers themselves, by the very existence of a one, it creates an, a phantom of the eight. So there is not endless, as to the points we were reading, such as that, how many base systems are there? Okay. We say it says somewhere. Uh, it says how many counting base systems are there? There's only one. Pretty hard core medicine to swallow. There's only one base counting system. Okay. Remind me, I want to go to polarity and I want to go to the vortex. Two things, please. Okay. Charlie? Um, I'm unclear as to how you're defining e each of those uh, numbers on, um, on the corner there. It represents a, a group, a family of numbers, right? Like one rep the family rep number group, the first one of 147, represents totally different planes what? of spatial orientation or points. This one's at the top. They never have two family number groups occupying both tops. Only one. There's one's at the bottom, and the other one's at the middle, and they are as far triangulated away well, from that's one. That's a number group right there. You're, you're, I'm talking one, about what about one itself? Is that a number group by itself? No, it can't. Okay, be. so one four seven is the group you're referring. to. Nothing's less than groups of threes. Okay, so and how is that made into uh, a number group? Yeah, just review for me. How, how, how it's really made into a number group is that these emanations are shooting out. This isn't what you're asking, but this is the correct answer. There's three emanations shooting out at the same time. And if they're shooting out dimensionally, Charlie, one's going right here, one's going right here, and one's right here. And as these three are shooting out, three points ahead of them, okay, is the last one that went out before okay. them. So there's space, so space, three, next so emanation. Get, get, so they don't just shoot out, one, and then there's another the one, then another one. The group, you add three each. That's Say it again. To get, uh, Everything's controlled by three. Oh, so you mm -hmm. add three to one to get four, and then you add three more to get seven, right. and then you add three more and you get to one again. So those cycle, those are a group in themselves, right, mm -hmm. with, with, with differences of three. I admire you, Charlie, for learning this, because your math is, you've learned so two, much. The fact you can deal five, with yeah, such easy, yeah. basic things okay. really is a big accomplishment, yeah. because okay. it's much harder for you than it is for normal people. But by themselves, they're just part of a, of a group. So That's right. Closed. But, they, they, but, but, but the blues and the pinks are closed, closed groupings. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely yeah. closed. Yeah. Creation's a closed creation. That's why it's called a bounded infinity. It's and, an infinity and, of duration, not direction. The duration is the spin continuum. It's, a never, it's infinity of motion, but it is not infinitely going out into space because it's warping and being curved by the intersections of these emanations it causes it to warp it's like a little kicker and it causes it to spin and as they spin ever hit a leaf on the lawn it kicks up in the air and comes closer to you than where it began from instead of going away where you wanted it to okay that's what these things are doing they're being warped okay and there, this is relativity here. Again, this is Einstein C squared, and it has an axis. It's a self-inclusive relativity. It's so extremely relative that it's relative to its convergence point, which is right here. Everything has an axis, and this is a fixed constant. This is an absolute. The number nine represents truth, perfection, consciousness. It's called a fixed constant. There's two schools of thoughts in the world. There's one that there are not fixed constants, and the other ones is that there are fixed constants. Mine is, is that there are fixed constants. These are called axioms, theorems. They're called divine virtues, spiritual principles. It can be applied just as fast. You can go from spiritual to physics and physics back to spiritual. It can be spiritual, it can be love, faith, um, trust. Uh, in physics, it can be um, the axis, the number nine. Why a gyroscope always stands up on its own when it spins. So by saying there's no fixed constants, basically sounds like uh, atheism or theism is exactly. like there's constants. Like entropy, there's no order in the universe versus homostasis, everything has a divine order. Exactly right. I'm glad you said it. That was a good point.
Charlie, you didn't ask your question, though. Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm, I'm clear as to uh, what you were talking about. Now I'm, I'm just doing some other things. Okay. Clarity. Okay. Um, the number one, if it's positive, the number two is going to be negative, the number four is going to be positive, the number eight is going to be negative, the number seven is going to be positive, the number five is going to be negative, excuse me, and the number one is positive. So it's going back and forth, back and forth. Positive, negative. There's your binary flip-flop. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. Um, okay, polarity. Because there's only six numbers in our physical world of creation, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, okay, which is a fact. Okay, in other words, in the third, with matter, there's only six numbers to work with. Okay. You don't have to worry about there being an odd number like that. When they try and do a positive, negative, and positive, negative, and when you get to nine, you're a positive, and then you go back to one, it's a negative, but you start with a positive, it doesn't work. Because there is not an odd system. The physical world of mass always has symmetry, always has parity, because it's an even amount. Six is an even amount of number. Things are always done in pairs. Okay. So thus, but it's complicated. This is where quantum comes in. First of all, the center of the circle, and I'm just teaching you guys how to be prepared to make this into the next chart, and there's another chart behind here, and there's many charts over here. Okay, so this is called the legend. This is God's schematic. It's the blueprint. Once you learn the math in this, then you start doing calculating and functions, and essentially, you start calculating this stuff, let you see where you're going to. Okay. So going into this kind of stuff. Okay? So you start going into more advanced physics. It's called cosmology of the universe. Okay? So, so if you have a circle, this is the center. But what look at this, the center's way off down here. Remember, this is explaining things. Okay? The reason it's off is because there's more to it. Because if we had a positive one, we know we must also have a negative one. Okay, so there's another one, not seen here, that's also negative. There's another two that's also positive, that's totally reverse of all of this. So instead of nine, I now need 18 to represent this system. Does everyone follow me? For, I, if I had, I have six, one, two, four, eight, seven, fives, I need another six, which is 12, to represent one, two, four, eight, seven, five. I'm just saying this, I think it'll be lost, but... And that gives me 12, and there's nothing less than packets of 9. So if I had one 9, now I got two 9s, okay, because, and there's uh, 6 and 6 is 12, okay. Where are my two other... Where's my other group of 6 um, to make 18, okay? It happens to be this 3, 9, 6. I've said that in the physical world there's this duality, okay, in the higher world, there is also a duality, but the duality is to try and make this third dimensional reality a mirror or a reflection of this greater world. Yet all the time while we're trying to be a hologram of this greater world, we're at the same time created by it. So we are essentially tied to it. We are bounded to binded with it. And we, have, we are actually signs or proofs of its existence. And what happens is, is that the higher linear emanation of nine becomes the third invisible force that does not allow anything else to be greater than it. Thus, we can mirror God, but we'll never be greater than God. So what happens when nine is a positive, three and six are both negative? Okay? Okay. Okay, it is the control, 3 and 6 are the result. Now in reality, just like I have two hands here, but it looks like one, I really have 6 here. I don't really have 3 of the 396, I really have 6. Okay, and I'll show you how it works. We started with a negative 3, here's our binary, flip-flop back and forth. We go negative, positive, Negative, 
Our next positive is not going to be 9. We already got a positive 9. Our next positive is going to be the invisible 6 that you can't see behind it, that it's laid over. And that's going to be your positive. Okay? There's an invisible 9 under there. That's going to be your negative. Okay? And there's an invisible 3 over here. And that's going to be your positive. Whenever you end on a number, it's in the, you always there's a second one hidden by it. You then give it the reverse polarity and go in the opposite direction. It's one of the principles of this math. Everyone follows me. Okay. So now you know there must be duplicate. There always must be a positive and negative to everything. We have that. It must and that it's not based on the fact of a duality of the positive and negative, but it's based on a trinary where you're going to have a positive and two negatives or a negative and two positives. Just as we had the 1, 4, 7, right here we're seeing, because in the third dimension it's a little bit more complicated, for the family number groups, the 1 and the 4 and the 7 are all positive at the same time, and in the 2, 8, 5s, they're all positive, they're all negative at the same time. How this coil works is these windings are wound in such a way to create that, sit in under here, that one wire, there's two wires here, uh, that one wire, all of the positives are in one wire a minute at, at the first stage. There's three stages. It's a firing stage. The first activation sequence of this coil only the right wire is all positive, and that's your 147s. So the second a activation stage is all your left wire is all positive. It's activated. And now the first family number group, 147, the other wire is totally off. And then they're both off. None of them are positive. They're all neither positive. And the middle space in there becomes all positives, the 396. I'm just preparing you this. This is like advanced education. This is for what you're about to see, not what you've seen so far to relate it to. As long as we're finishing up on this symbol, okay, I said I'd go to vortex motion. I, I missed something, so let me, let me just um, ask you one more time, um, even though you mentioned it. One, four, and seven are always positive? No. So there's they do, they're they're one, four, sevens are always positive. They flip, they reverse the polarity. Or, or yeah. one, four, sevens are always negative. Right, I got you, I got you. Okay. So, but they, as soon as it creates a circuit, it's a good question. It goes to its opposite. Then. This coil here, the, the negative one four sevens are all on the wire that the positive eight two fives are on. You don't have, and the positive eight two fives and the positive one four sevens all have the negative eight two fives. They're so separated from one another that that's why only one wire is on at the other time. Because if both wires had the set, set, same family number groups on at the same time then this coil wouldn't work. It'd have resistance. Okay? So thus, when the first wire's on, it's all just positive one four sevens. And on that wire, there's only negative eight two fives. When the second wire's on, it's just all positive um, eight two fives. Yeah. And the negative one four sevens aren't on. It would help maybe if you right. could draw a picture of the wires that you're pointing to on that so that we can understand... There are two wires that aren't there. there a total, are there, aren't there a total of just two different wires? And the windings. That's right. So there's a red wire, so to speak, and a blue wire, right? I'll show you on a toroid. I think it should be easier for you. The reason I went so far ahead and told you now is because I wanted you just to get a feel how it related to the symbol, that there's somehow eventually it's all connected to this, because I don't think that even when you see the other one that you're going to be able to understand exactly how they tie in together. So I... Go ahead. So you're saying uh, the polarity switches when the current reverses its direction. Is that what you're saying? The emanations are always going out. But I'm when they hit one out. wire, the electricity goes in one way. When they hit it, the other wire, it goes in the opposite direction. Right. But, but you have an alternating current source there, don't you? Right. Well, what makes it switch? It's not switching. That's Let's what, wait till we see the torque. That's what you wanted to ask us early on. You said, we're the switch. We have to figure out how to... or something, didn't you, at the beginning? See, this is what happens when I try and explain something without a charter of graph. 
So I'm, I'm not familiar with the, uh, the way the, uh, the activation you sequence. Through, you run um, uh, electric field, uh, electricity through the wires. You've got two wires. And that's the most important part. Right? You've got two wires, right? Just like.